School is in session in this village called Lokipete Tekwan. It is mid-morning and the sun is right above our heads. The sun rays are penetrating through the wooden sticks that form the walls and roof of this classroom. It is the only classroom. It is what makes this a school. A school comprised of twigs, sticks and leaves. In here are pupils of different ages who ought to be attending separate classes. They are all crowded here because there are no other facilities. For more than a decade, this village has been in existence, but the school only started a year ago. One man has volunteered to teach them every day. Like many other schools in these remote areas in Turkana, these children lack necessary tools to make learning acceptable. They lack desks, chairs, books, and even pencils. All they have are sticks, hands and legs as writing materials. It is a painstaking affair to acquire knowledge for many of them and indeed thousands of children across the county because this scenario is painfully replicated over the county. Teachers are the most patient. Sometimes they go without pay and the tools they use to teach cannot be compared with the ones being used in modern classrooms in urban centers. <laughs> and yet the teachers here have to help these pupils acquire basic education and ensure that they can compete with those in urban areas, a daunting task for many of them. When there is no feeding program, the situation is dire as the pupils choose to answer to the hunger for food over that of knowledge. It is worse for the girl child. Many of them are married off at a very young age. Helena Kuom is 16 years old. Her parents were in the process of collecting dairy when she was rescued by a pastor of a local church. She was brought here to learn, but she's finding it difficult to cope. At another school, children are sitting on hot sand, eager to acquire knowledge. Slightly more than 30 children have been attending lessons at a church compound in Kakuma. Like many other schools we have been to, these children are also being taught the same lessons by a single teacher, despite being children of different ages. Sometimes the teacher will teach them using standard one or standard two material, and the next day go back to kindergarten material, and the young ones just have to keep up. Many of these schools or gatherings that happen under a tree are at the mercy of well-wishers and donors. The donors, who are mostly non-governmental organizations, provide food on a monthly basis, and we are told this has led to an increase in enrollment. Many parents send their children here to get food, and not necessarily education. So why has education in Turkana County always been moving backwards instead of forward? There are many answers to this question. I think the, the most important is just information. Get that information out there. Tell these communities why. Why should we go to school? Why should we enroll our girls to school as opposed to marrying them off? 
once they see the benefit of actually having a child in school, I think they'll, they'll warm up to the idea because it's all about the information. Maybe they don't know, they don't have the knowledge about it. Mimi ni naisi mbaya. Naisi uchungu kwa roo. Kwa sababu, hii ni shule rasmi ya serikali. Ndiyo inajua. Zaza nakosa usaidisi kwa serikali. Hata kama zaza hii dare ilimu, ikikuja inakuja na chakula kidogo. Kuja na gunia mbili, tatu. Mwalimu ya kikuja hapa, kuna wasaidizi. Kama mimi. Kama mimi na funsa, kuna security, kuna wenye nasaidia kupika, na kuchota maji. Na imagine, kwa mula moja, unaletewa gunia tatu, na idari ilimu. This county is vast. It is the second largest county in the country. Its terrain makes it difficult to move from one area to another. Infrastructure is poor. Health facilities are lacking and the few schools built using modern standards are not being utilized properly. Take Nawontos village for instance. This school with three classrooms was completed late last year. But learning is minimal owing to the ever-present cases of insecurity. There have been numerous attacks against the Turkana community by the Toposa from the neighboring South Sudan and pupils together with their parents have been on the run. The government posted two teachers to come and teach here, but they only stayed for a short period. Before the school term ended earlier this month, this man, a Kenya police reservist, was the only volunteer who taught them. Despite being surrounded by concrete walls, there is little to celebrate about the learning environment here. Stones make up for chairs. Outside the classroom, other reservists are on the lookout. Kama mwalimu sita mimi sasa kama mimi naapendelea kuwafunza kuwasaidia watoto. Wawe wawili, wao wachache, wao wengi. Na mpaka tumeandika ripoti, tumetoka kuambia wafadhili tumetoka kuelimisha wananchi wasasi wa watoto bado hawajasingatia and yet there's an even bigger irony in turkana this county has been home to millions of refugees from various war torn countries including south sudan ethiopia the democratic republic of congo among others but it appears the host community while allowing outsiders to find peace and solace have been neglected this is a primary school in one of the sections inside the Kakuma refugee camp, the second largest camp in the country. Built and maintained by a non-governmental organization, this school is home to more than 1,000 refugee pupils, majority of them from South Sudan. The learning environment is different. It is a gated compound. There are walls and roofs keeping the children safe. As we watch them play, we realize that the environment inside this camp has given these children a new hope away from their motherland where war threatened to eliminate them. The education that these children are acquiring now are intended to make them a, a better citizen in the future. We hopefully that uh, we hopefully hope that you know peace will come back from all the various countries they came from and at least the knowledge that they are going to get from Kakuma will make them a better citizen in the future. They all have a clean environment to study. The classrooms, though crowded, have met the standards and demands of the Kenyan education curriculum. Standard 1 pupils are in a different class from the ones who are in Standard 2, all the way to Class 8. From here, these pupils will end up in good secondary schools, thanks to the donors and well-wishers who are ready to help them better their lives. We were blessed to have a secondary school that is said to be operational as from Monday next week in the new area. Uh, this is our past graduates and uh, we, we are so blessed to have one of the secondary schools that uh, maybe 50% of the population will be absorbed into the new primary schools. That there are discrepancies in the education sector in many parts in this northern side of the country is not secret. 
In the past, there was little to no effort by previous regimes to improve the sector and create an equal environment for the young ones to succeed. But it is a new dawn in Turkana, especially with the coming of devolution and the establishment of a county government. Today, the county government has ensured that over 70% of the pupils in rural areas and who are bright access education in some of the modern schools. But it has not been easy to convince parents who are mostly pastoralists that education is more important. In this village, children do not go to school because the parents do not value education. The nearest school is 15 kilometers away and the parents see little need to take their children there. They would rather see them take their livestock to pasturage areas. Those in the education industry say it is like fighting a losing battle. If you look at the region, for example, you notice that whereas this is one nation, but you can see differences in levels of development. You can't compare uh, Trukana to say Kiambu or Nyeri. They are far apart in terms of uh, levels of development. Whereas a child in Trukana will, will walk 10, 20 kilometers to school, perhaps a child in Nyeri will walk a kilometer. For a very long time, Education was stagnant here, but stakeholders have started to pull together to make a difference here. While basic education is still a challenge, something brilliant is happening. From the horizon, while approaching Lodwa town, one can see a huge roof and a concrete building in the middle of some very dry thicket and dust. It is one of the newest buildings in Turkana, and it is an education facility, one of its kind here in Turkana. This is Turkana University College. The university is only nine months old. It was only established after numerous meetings to decide whether the amount of money required would make this a justifiable cause or not. You are imagining of a vast, vast land that doesn't have the necessary infrastructure for development. And so when we came back to Kakamega, we thought seriously about this and we wrote a proposal to the Ministry of Education saying there is need for intervention in Turkana County. And intervention will come through establishment of a university college in Turkana. At a cost of close to one billion shillings, the university, which is a constituent college of the Masinde Muliro University, was set up with a modern administration block, modern lecture rooms and halls, a computer lab, a library, among many other facilities. Once it was set up, there was a buzz in Turkana. But a new challenge soon emerged. Where were the students to be enrolled here going to come from? It came to the issue of getting the students to Turkana. Because the road between uh, 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 Kitale and Lodwa can sometimes be extremely impossible and sometimes a bit dangerous. And so to get to make sure that we are a part and parcel of the whole process, we we actually transported our students from, from Kitale to Lodwa with their parents to show them that there is something happening in Trukan. Today, this university has more than 800 students taking various undergraduate courses as well as certificate courses. Many of the courses being undertaken were specifically designed for this university and the environment in which it has been set up. Some of the unique courses include dry land farming, marine studies and a program on renewable energy. You can see we have plenty of sunshine. We have plenty of wind. And therefore we need to have manpower that will enable us or enable the region to tap these resources. So we also have a program in renewable energy at the university. But more significantly, and that is the direction we want to take, we have established programs in oil and gas. We have established programs in marine studies. While the county now boasts of having a university, many of the sons and daughters of this county are still missing out. 
over 70% of the students enrolled here are from outside Turkana. Many are from Kitale, Eldoret, and even Taita Taveta. The other big group of students comes from the refugee community. We have insisted on coexistence and respect for one another's culture and learning one another's culture. And we are now insisting on also learning the cultures of other people. And that is why, apart from just that, we are establishing yet another degree program in prehistory. It is also not shocking that a majority of the parents in the remote areas have no idea that the university exists. The idea behind starting such a facility of higher learning was that there would be a spiral effect among the communities here in Turkana, where parents would be eager to give their young ones basic education and send them to high school and eventually university. But the change in attitude is still a hindrance. In very many of these marginalized areas, you'll, you'll find that parents would rather have the girls, the girl child, married than actually go to school. Those challenges are there. Turkana County lacks water, and many people rely on rivers for their drinking, cooking, washing, and bathing water. This university is also facing the same challenge. Inside the university's compound, I meet four students, three male and one female. Two students are from the Gambela region in Ethiopia one from South Sudan and one from Turkana County, but a remote area over 160 kilometers from here. I asked them about their experience at this campus. For those who were seen, it was like very far to go like Nairobi, other places. Now they have this, opportun this opportunity to study because they have a university now. It's a gift for us. It has never happened. It's the first one and we hope that God will, help, will give more yeah, well, the reason why I decided to, to join this university, yeah, it is because it is very, very, very important for, for me to learn here. There's a, whatever which I'm looking for, it is available here. So it means that any university here in Kenya, it means that they are the same, there's no different. So that's why I choose to be here. As people know, this, this place is married, and even the, the way I came from, it is almost the same like this place. The drug culture helps this community to practice agriculture, like uh, they practice crop which are dr dr drought resistant. So it is adding value. Most likely some people have started along the, the lakes, so they are, they are doing farming there. Many foreign students are lucky because their school fees is paid by donors. The locals have to wait for the county government to allocate funds to sponsor them. Or if they are lucky, their parents will sell their livestock and other property and use the money to send their children to university. Ramzi Lochoro is one such student. Acquiring education for him was a daunting task. He went to primary school after the Kebaki regime started the free primary education program. He finished high school in 2011 but could not proceed to university. He had to stay home until early this year when a donor came through. He is excited about the opportunity to study at the university and wants to change his life for good. But he reckons there are so many other students who are wasting away at home because of lack of funds. According to him, the greatest privilege is the opportunity to compete and almost be equal with other students in other universities across the country. Paul 
Professor Kabaji says apart from spending most of his time in lecture rooms, he has had to also spend time in the villages creating awareness about the university's existence and the importance of education among the Turkana people. You will find us in most cases on chief's barrazes. You will find us seated with parents and herdsmen talking about the, virtue, the value of education. So in most cases, our communication is at that level where we are going to Chiefs Barazas and talking about our programs. In some instances, his team has had to ferry children from remote areas to the university college and give them a tour so that they can begin to have a mind shift about education and the role it will play in improving their lives. According to Professor Kabaji, the locals must start embracing and owning this university now. Trukana University College is not a Garapaya Kabaji's project. And so that is how we have drawn in everybody, including the county government, and they are always welcome and they are always ready to give ideas and give us the necessary support that we need all the time. The university also wants to give hope to pupils who have not done well in secondary education. They will be given a chance to do manual jobs here and eke a living. For education stakeholders in this county, the biggest challenge now is to create a synergy across the entire education sector so that there is a seamless continuation of the learning experience right from basic education to high school and all the way to university level. For them, their biggest achievement will be seeing a county that develops its own engineers, physicians, business managers, innovators among many others from this university. After all, it is possible for the sons and daughters of Turkana to rise from their hardships and become professionals with admirable reputation in Kenya and across the globe. Nimrotabu NTV, Lodwa, in the county of Turkana.